Hey everybody, and welcome back to Gaming for Tokens. I'm Marshall, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is I am done moving, which means that I will hopefully be able to produce videos more regularly, I hope. That'd be cool. Um, I also have a new setup, so uh, one of the things you may notice is that this video should be uploaded in 1080p, which blows my mind. I got a new monitor, so I can record 1080p now. It was always a monitor size thing. It was never like a file size thing or anything like that. Um, also, it'll make editing a bit easier, which is kind of cool. So, uh, yeah, not that these videos are really edited, but you get the deal. Uh, so anyway, on with the episode. I know at the end of the last episode I talked about a bunch of stuff that I was probably going to talk about in this video. Then said I probably shouldn't. I probably shouldn't have. In this episode, we're going to be talking a lot about object communication and, like, being able to pass damage and health between things. Well, being able to pass damage between things. Healing is basically the same thing, but reverse. So you'll you'll see how to do that, hopefully. Um, but we're going to be talking about how to pass damage between things and how to access, have certain code objects access other certain code objects so that we can uh, get our pieces of code talking to each other. Because right now, um, so far, we've only really had a couple pieces of code that are all acting independently, um, with the exception of our gun spawning our bullet in the last episode. Um, Hopefully I'm going to be, you know, with the with the damage thing, I'll be able to get some, like, the bullet communicating with an object and passing numbers to it and telling it what it should be doing, which could be really cool. Um, so there's a lot to do in this episode, and I want to jump right in. So I have the same scene that I had before, except you'll notice that I added walls. And uh, hopefully if I have time in the video, I'm going to do something really fancy that's going to require these walls. But if not, um, not a big deal. There's walls there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I also added another light. I moved the lights around a little bit to make this like I could so I could see better. So now when I hit play, I you know I can actually see in the shadows and stuff down here. Um, but that's all. That's all I did. Uh, walls and lights. Uh, just visuals. So the first thing we're gonna want to do is if we're gonna be passing damage from the bullet, we need to have the bullet passing damage. So we need to open up our bullet script in uh, Mono Develop here. And this should look really familiar. There's not much to this. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, make a new public variable. It's going to be an int. So we're going to say public int damage. And it's going to equal, for now, we'll say 10. The reason why I say 10 is because uh, the thing that's going to have health is probably going to have 100 health. That way it's somewhat of a percentage, even though it's integers. I know that kind of goes against my intro video to C Sharp. But... Um, there's a reason why I want to do it that way instead of floats. I can, uh, um, well, that reason is that I can always accurately calculate the damage, and I won't have like weird rounded numbers, and I won't ever have to round the health to see if you have like point zero 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 one health, you should probably be dead. But you get the idea. Um, with integers, it's always going to be rounded off, and I can always say, great, you either have one health or zero health flat. Um, I don't have to think about these wonky numbers. Um, so anyway, this thing's going to deal ten damage. So how's it going to deal 10 damage? Well, right here, where we have our line cast, where we say we've hit an object, we are going to type something that is going to seem kind of like magic. Uh, and that is going to be this line here. Where are we here? Okay. Hit dot collider dot send message. Now, send message is an interesting... Um, it's an interesting function that I feel like I don't understand entirely, but I know how to use it. And um, basically, the gist is you feed it a string. So, hi, I'm a string. So, I would feed it a string, and that string is a function on the object th that I am sending a message to. So, right now, I'm sending a message to the collider that we hit. So, this is our hit collider, if that helps you remember that um, and then we're sending a message to it well, the message that we're sending to it is I want you to run the function hi I'm a string which isn't going to be on our collider but yeah, maybe it is and if it is then it um, it will run that function so likely what we're going to want to do instead of that is run a damage function damage function and we're going to want to pass it damage because this is how we uh, there's a couple different options for this. See, there's an um, 
I usually use this option, which is the the string with the, which is the method name. Method is kind of another word for function. Uh, for your purposes, you can think that. <laughs> I'm sure that they're different, but I uh, I don't. Most of the time, there isn't a difference. So um, method name is the name of the function that you're going to call in the object, and then the object value is the uh, the thing that you want to send to the object like damage. So if this bullet is hitting this object, we want to tell the object to be damaged by this amount. So, hey, object that we hit, which is this part, I want to tell you to take damage, take this much. Sometimes it helps to read code uh, like a sentence, if you can, if you're able to, to see if it makes sense. Now the last thing we're going to want to do with send message, and this is where it gets kind of weird, is add a send message options. So what we can do, and this is a, an enumerator, which I haven't talked about. <laughs> and I don't expect you to know what an enumerator is, but um, these are basically the three kinds. There's, well, the two kinds. There's don't require receiver and require receiver. And by default, it uses require receiver. What that means is if the object that we're sending the, the damage to or calling damage on the function, if it doesn't have a, a damage function, then it'll throw an error. It'll say, whoa, I don't have anything called damage on me. What are you trying to do? But if, you, you, ugh, if we use don't require receiver, then it will, um, it'll just ignore the fact that it doesn't have damage and it won't call the function. It'll just, um, we'll say, hey, you should run your damage function. It'll go, I don't have one. And we'll go, okay, cool, whatever, don't run it then. And that's that's usually the one that I use because I never know what I'm going to be sending a message on. I could be sending a message on a wall. I could be sending a message on another player if it's a first-person shooter. We don't know. So usually a good thing. I'm sure that there's probably some performance downside to that, but for like the little testing games and stuff that we're doing right now, this is probably just fine. Just note that in the future if you're making something and that's a bad thing, that it's a bad thing, <laughs> I guess. I don't know how you would know, but oops. Okay. So in theory, this is sending our integer damage to the object that we hit. So if we go back to Unity here, we shouldn't see any errors and we shouldn't see any difference in how this functions. We still have our thing we shoot and... Oh, I, mean, I sped up the speed of the bullets. That's something else that I did when I was... Uh, yeah. Um, so anyway, not much has changed. So go ahead and reopen that again. And if I close it, oh, there we go. Okay, so we have that. Now we need something that will take damage. So we're going to create a new C sharp script and we're going to call it damageable. And we're going to open that up. And damageable is going to have a function on it called. It's going to be a public function. That's important because send message, I believe, only works on public functions. Public void damage. And uh, it shouldn't need any of this stuff for now. And then we're going to have a public int called health. And this is going to equal 100. So uh, it kind of goes without saying, but this is going to take in an integer, and the integer is going to be called damage to some degree, and then we're going to say health minus equals damage. Great. So in theory, that should already work. We should be able to say put this pillar here, and uh, put it on here. Where it, uh, there it is. So we should be able to slap that on there. And now, if we watch this script over on the left when we shoot it, in theory, see how it's taking 10 damage every time? See how it's now at 50, 30, 20, 10? Well, here's the problem. If we keep shooting it, it's just going to keep going down. Now it's negative health, and that's not okay, because it's long dead and hasn't gone away yet. So what we want to do is we want to say um, if health is less than or equal to 0, and there's a bunch of different ways you can go about this. Um, I would typically, this is the death function, quote unquote. Um, and the way that I would go about handling it is with a kill function. And then I would make that kill function. 
So what the kill function is going to do is it's going to destroy the game object and do anything else that we need, like cleanup or whatever. Um, in this particular instance, because we're shooting a pillar, uh, right there, we could in theory have a another pillar that we spawn in its place that's like a broken rubbly pillar and like a particle effect and all that stuff. All of that stuff would go under kill. Um, the reason why we do it here is kind of a, a finicky thing on my end. Um, I like to be able to use my scripts in as many ways as possible. I like the to get the real usability out of them. Um, I could make this script very, very specific to this particular instance, or I could try to make it work for as many instances as possible. And um, I, I prefer the latter. So with this particular way, I can actually call kill via another way. So say um, if this was a game that had a button that you pushed and it blew a bunch of stuff up. I could go through all those objects and call the kill function instead of the damage function and it would do different things. Um, it's kind of a nitpicky thing on my end but I like doing it this way and I think that everyone should do it this way because um, the more you break stuff apart the more confusing it can be but the more control you have over individual instances of things kind of. Not saying you should break everything into uh, little parts but I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. But anyway, so the kill function is just going to basically say, um, we could say destroy. So we could do the good old destroy thing that we did last time and just feed a game object and call it good, which works. I mean, now when we shoot it, it's going to, it's going to destroy itself. Like if we shoot this thing enough, then it goes away. Um, so we've effectively killed the cylinder. Damage passing is that easy. I'm not even kidding. Um, the other way we could do this, is, and this would be if we wanted the object to go away but not be removed from the world, we could do game object dot set. Whoops, wrong kind of game object. So I did a capital game object. I want to do a lowercase game object. That matters because the lowercase game object is this game object, and the uppercase game object is a game object. Those are very, very different things. So game object dot set active, and we want to pass in a false. So what it's going to do is, um, so on every object in Unity, there is a checkbox up here on the inspector in the top right, and if you uncheck that checkbox, the thing goes away. What that's doing is it's setting the game object to uh, to inactive. So it's setting the function that we just set here, set active. It's setting that to false this function is that checkbox. It's an easy way to think about it. So now if we come into our first person shooter and we shoot at the thing a bunch, it still goes away. It's still there, but it's still in the world. Like it's still in our hierarchy tree here, That's, but it's grayed out because it means it's, it's hidden. And if you look, the checkbox up in the top right is unchecked. So if I check that again, it's back. Um, so anyway, that's the two ways to kill something. Uh, I think that they both have their advantages. I think that if you set the game object to inactive, you have a better chance of doing things later with the object. Well, obviously you do, because um, if you destroy an object to remove from the world and you can't really get it back, you have to reinstance it and then reposition it. and You have to recreate the object, essentially. But if you just turn it off, that means that it's there, and if you want to mess with it later, you can. Like... Um, Say, every uh, first-person shooter, like an arena shooter kind of thing, like Halo or whatever, there's a wall that you can blow up, and so you blow up the wall, and you set the game object to inactive, you set a destroyed one to active, so you swap out the two, essentially. Then you can, uh, on the next round, you can re-enable the original one, and then disable the new one, and the destroyed one, and then um, everything is back to normal. And you didn't actually have to destroy anything, or reinstance anything, or reset up anything, you just had to swap the two's activity. If that makes sense at all. I hope that does. Anyway, so that's kind of what, uh, how that's done. Now, I kind of want to do something fun here, and I want to make a ball that we can shoot that is completely indestructible. So I want to make a sphere. This will be our ball, and I want to go ahead and make a new material for it because I can... Uh, we'll put a, yeah, diffuse of, oh, my color thing ended up on the other monitor. Sorry about that. 
Anyway, I made a diffuse of red, and I'm going to go ahead and throw that on the ball. So now I have a red ball, and uh, this ball is going to have rigid body on it, which we haven't played with for a couple videos. Rigid body. And it's going to have a physical material. It's going to have... I really need to fix this. Yeah. Um, sorry, there's a... Uh, my other monitor's freaking out. Um, physical materials. There we go. Um, so we don't have any of those yet, so we're going to go ahead and import those by going to assets, import package, and physical materials. Oh, everything's showing up on my other monitor. All right, so we're going to import. Shouldn't take very long. And now we have the physical materials here, and I'm going to choose rubber. So now when we hit play, we have this ball in our scene that kind of slumps down. We can push it around if we want. But I'm going to make it so that we can um, we can shoot that thing and uh, mess with it. I'm going to name it Ball. I'm going to collapse the environment here. And I'm going to make a new script. And this new script is going to be called RB for rigid body. And it's going to say um, interact. It's going to be RB Interact. Open that up. Do, 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 do. There we go. And uh, things. So some of the things we're going to need to do in here. Um, we're going to need to put a damage function on this. So we might as well just start with that. Damage. And it's going to, for the moment, take an integer called DMG. So what that means is that um, when we shoot it, this function will be called, just like on the damageable script. And we could put the damageable script on the ball if we wanted to. There's nothing wrong with that. But um, for now, we're just going to put the RB interact on it. On the ball. Oh, there. There we go. And uh, I'm going to move it up because I'm a stickler for organization, as you should be as well. And this um, RB Interact script is going to have um, kind of a special thing going on with it because what we need to do is we need to interact with the rigid body every time we shoot it. And there's a couple ways to do that. There is. So, well, okay, first off, there's a rigid body class. So you just type rigid body, and if you make it lowercase, it'll actually access the rigid body on this object. Kind of like the game object, how there's a lowercase and uppercase. Lowercase rigid body accesses this rigid body. It's usually a general theme with Unity. If it's lowercase, that means this, whatever it is. If it's uppercase, that means a, whatever it is. So if we say rigid body and we do dot, the first thing we're going to see is add explosion force, which is the one we want. There's a bunch of other things in here, like add force and add force of position and add relative force and all of these things. But the thing we're interested in is add explosion force. Um, Add force is just like a direction, so you'll move the rigid body in a direction. Um, this is actually, uh, I'm trying to think, this would be useful for like an Angry Birds kind of game where you set a direction and then you add a certain amount of force. So uh, the options for this are basically you're going to be some really specific. Um, and you got to add a mode, I guess. But the. Um, the force is just a direction vector, like we saw in the last video with the uh, vector 3.forward kind of thing. It's that, but with a multiplied float that is the intensity. So you would just say, go this direction times this hard, and then you'd feed that into this, and it would do that. So it's pretty straightforward. It's actually really easy to make an Angry Birds clone. I maybe I should have done that instead, but eh. Um, it's boring. <laughs> I like this. This is a lot more interesting, I think. So add force at position is we add a force... Um, so like think about a bowling ball and how you at like specific points on the bowling ball you roll it but you roll it with kind of a like a side spin that's kind of what this does so the force is all is still a direction vector and it's still an intensity vector but then there's also a position that you're applying force on the object um, not exactly what we want because we're going to have an impulse, which is why we want to go with force. A for, uh, force explosion. Uh, an explosion is uh, an amount of force, a place that the explosion took place at, 
and then the radius at which the uh, explosion happened. And there's a couple other things that you can do, like an upwards modifier and all that stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the one we're going to want. We could probably use force at position, um, but I don't know. We might end up having to use that. I'm pretty. I, by the way, this entire episode is unscripted. I don't know if that's clear or not yet. I just sat down and I had a rough idea of, of what I wanted to talk about. So, at explosion force is probably the one we're going to want. Um, so that's the one we're going to go with for now. So, on here, we have an explosion force. And I'm going to go ahead and just say, let's do damage as the explosion force. Now, we're going to need to multiply this by a float. The reason why we're going to need to do that is because damage, the DMG, the thing that we're, um, we're importing, is, or the thing that we're passing into this is an integer value, it's not a float value. And it asks for a float value, so we're going to get an error if we just leave it, but if we multiply it by 1f, that converts it to a float. The, the most shorthand way I've ever seen of doing it. There are other ways to do it with like typecasting and stuff like that where you like type float in parentheses somehow. I forget how to do all that because I've just been doing this for so long. <laughs> and this way is a lot shorter, I think. Anyway, um, so we convert this to a float value. And so basically the, the intensity of our explosion is going to be the amount of damage we're dealing, which kind of makes sense, right? Like a rocket launcher would deal a lot more damage and it would have a lot more explosion force than say our puny little laser gun that we've made. So next we have a explosion position. This is where it gets muddy, right? Because we haven't actually, we haven't passed anything in here that dictates a position. So that's going to be a problem. Um, and I'm, I'm not just now noticing this. I knew this beforehand. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to, on our damage uh, function, so hmm, I think we can do it in here. We're going to need to create a new class. Now, creating new classes is kind of an advanced thing, but I feel like it's something that had I known a lot earlier, I would have... I just dropped my phone. Had it been... Uh, had I known a lot earlier, it would have been um, a lot more beneficial to me, I think, because I, I use them constantly now, like all the time, and I feel like it would have been... I would have had a lot less headache earlier in my programming life had I known how to create custom classes. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it and if you, if you learn, great. If you don't, I highly suggest you give it another shot and really learn how to make these things. It's really, really easy actually because it's, it's already right here. So what all you're going to do is you're going to say public class and you're going to name the class. In this particular instance, what we're going to be making is we're going to be making, um, we're making a, a thing that houses damage information. So what we want to call it is uh, damage info. So we have a damage info class and we don't want it to extend anything because that's what this is doing here, the mono behavior. It's ex uh, this damageable script is extending mono behavior and um, in mono behavior functions we have access to things like void start, right? We have uh, functions that are inherently called within mono behaviors so start is called at the beginning of the frame um, because it extends a mono behavior. Every mono behavior uh, has those functions. Our class doesn't have that. Our class is entirely empty. The damage info class. So it doesn't actually, it's not going to have any functions that we can just use. We have to make everything from scratch. And that's kind of why it's an, an advanced topic. Um, but anyway. They're really, really useful for certain things, um, specifically when using send message, which is what we're doing now. Uh, the reason being, we can only, uh, as, I, as I'm kind of showing here, we can only ever pass one thing using send message. We can only send an integer or a float or a game object. We can't send more than one thing, right? Well, we can send a class and a class can have all sorts of stuff in it. So in other words, what we can say here is we can say public int damage. And we're going to have that equal zero for the time being. And we're going to say public game object sender. So we can actually have the thing that dealt damage be passed 
as well as the amount of damage that's being passed. You'll see how this makes sense in a minute, I think. Those are going to be the only two things for the time being that I'm going to put in here, but you could put any number of things in here. You could put, um, well, I know we haven't talked about enumerators, but I usually put an enumerator in here for the type of damage that was dealt. Was it fire damage? Was it poison damage? Was it something like that? Totally something you could do. Very, very doable with this. Now, I just realized I started doing something and I haven't explained it yet. So, um, actually, we don't need to do that. I'll save that for another video. <laughs> Sorry to tease there, but that's, uh, that's a thing that's a little too advanced. So, we have our custom class, and if we go back to here, uh, we're probably going to get some errors because we... St oh, no. Wow. Really? All right. Uh, I thought we stopped... Yeah, we stopped midway here. I'm surprised it didn't give us errors for this. So, anyway, um, we're going to say bullet gets um, right here. Before we send damage, we're going to say... We're going to create a new damage info class. We're going to say damage info, which you'll notice that because we have this new public class, it shows up on our list of possible things to create, just like if we were creating a integer or a float. It actually has a an entry into the autocomplete list, which is kind of cool. That's a thing that Mono Developing Unity is. So damage info, and we're going to call this one temp just because it's a temporary variable that we're going to get rid of at the end of this function. We don't care about it at all. And we're going to say it equals a new damage info. So what temp is, temp is uh, one of these classes. It's It has an integer and it has a sender. So this is apparent if we go temp dot, not slash dot, we have a damage and we have a sender. Just like in the the, the, the class here, damage sender, we have damage sender. Now it has a bunch of other stuff in here too, but we can we can ignore that. That's stuff that comes inherently with comes inherent within co classes. Uh, it's a C sharp thing. So we have equals, we can compare two things together and yeah, it's we can convert the whole thing to a string if we want to. Uh, it's it's convoluted stuff that you probably never use, well, you won't use for a while at least. Anyway, so we want to set the damage to equal our damage. And we want to say temp dot Sender equals oh, 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 game object. So now we've set the variables of our of our information class, and we're going to instead of passing damage, we're going to say have temp instead. So the damageable thing needs to be edited now, because we're not taking an integer anymore. We're taking a damage. Oh, oops. Taking a damage info. So now we're going to say health minus equals damage dot damage. So I hope this is making sense for the most part. Uh, basically, we have a we have a thing, uh, this damage info class that has variables within it, and we can access those variables through dot whatever the name of the variable is, and we can pass that variable that is a class because a class is a variable. Well, classes an object and these are variables so when you send message you send an object just like it says there this is object so you pass an object and an integer is an object but so is a class this is where things kind of get confusing again everything is an object kind of <laughs> um, but objects can have objects inside of them that's probably the best explanation I'm going to be able to give you today. <laughs> so this damage info thing is an object. It is also the object that it, well, it is an object because a class is an object. So it is a class. Its type of class is damage info, which also is its type of object. Like I said, it's confusing and it's weird. And there's, I'm not going to be able to give you a good example right now, but or a good explanation right now, but basically public class damage info has these things in it and we can pass that between objects now and get more information out of it. The benefit of this is for the thing that we're trying to do here, we don't have an int anymore, we have a damage info. Because the thing that we were lacking before is a position, right? We didn't have a position for where we wanted the explosion to happen. Well now we have a damage dot sender which is a game object 
and every game object has a transform dot position. So now we have a, an amount of damage which we need to change to damage dot damage, and we have a position. So now we have we know where the thing was when it impacted the the ball. Now the explosion radius is just something that we're gonna have to set. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say 0 0.025. Uh, 0 0.05 should be fine. It's just going to be a small radius so that it affects just this object. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Now there's an upward lift modifier and all that stuff and we can um, we can play with that if we want. Why not? Let's make it a uh, 0.25. And we'll see what happens with this. So this is the rigid body interact that's already on our ball. You know, notice that it doesn't even have any public variables. It's it's just uh, a damage function essentially. It's a thing for the send message to hook into to send variables to. And when we hit play, uh, I have no idea what's going to happen here, but we shoot the thing, and nothing happens. Oh no! Wait, see, it's moving. We're moving it. So what we can do with this is we can um, take the mass of the object. I think and we can put it at like 0.25 hopefully that'll oh, 0 0.025 apparently apparently I, I flubbed with my thumb yeah see now when we shoot it, it actually like it floats up and if we wanted to we could um, uh, we could probably increase that a little bit and we could make it bouncy instead so instead of rubber if we make it bouncy now it'll uh, kind of bounce in place but when we shoot it it'll really go nuts Well, sort of. I mean, it only goes so nuts. I mean, we're dealing, like, what is it? Uh, an amount of, like, 10? Yeah, we're dealing 10 units of force. So another thing that we could do here is we could actually finally put a public variable on it. We can say public float uh, react scale? Sure. And we just make it a, a float value of 1. And then we say instead of multiplying this by one, we multiply this by the react scale. So now what that'll let us do is we can say uh, this react scale is going to be ten, and now it will multiply the force by ten instead of by one. So when we shoot this, whoops, my mouse was on the button there. So if we shoot this thing, it's going to go nuts, <laughs> and it'll come down eventually. And then it bounces away. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's cool. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about, the last thing that I wanted to talk about while we're running out of time here, <laughs> is the other way to interact with objects. So I, I showed you the, uh, the send message here. There's another way to do effectively this exact same thing. And that is hit dot collider, which is the same, dot get component. Now get component is kind of a weird function because it looks different. It has these um, these carrots in it. And what those define is a type. So like I said before that um, our, our damage info is a type of class. It is also the type of object that it is. Um, this is where we, we put something in here. So if we wanted to say access the, the damageable thing, because that's what we're trying to pass stuff into, we could say, oops, damageable. So now what we're doing is we're saying, hey, the object that we hit, I want to access the damageable class on that script. So we're going to be accessing this thing. So you'll see when I hit dot, I have the damage function that we put on uh, damageable, and I should also have the kill function that we put on damageable. So in the example that I said before where we have a button that explodes a bunch of stuff, I just have a list of objects that it's going to, do, going to explode, and then I just call the kill function on all of them, and or, or maybe I put an explode value on all of them, whatever. I just go through all of them and do this, and it's probably better than sending message because I don't know that those objects have the function that I need. With this way I can do something like this. 
uh, oops, uh, do, 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 if it has this, uh, this component type, then do that dot damage, uh, damage info temp, that's what we called it. So now if I comment out this line, it'll only damage the things in the scene that have the damageable class applied to them. So this, this code object here, this, uh, this C-sharp file. So only the things that have that will be damaged in this, the way that this is currently set up. So if I shoot the ball, it's not going to go anywhere. Because again, the ball doesn't have a damageable class on it. It has an RB interact. But if we shoot the pillar again, it'll still go away. Because the pillar still has the damageable script on it. it yeah. Yeah, because the yeah, because it still has the damageable script on it. The ball doesn't. But if we take and we put the damageable script on the ball, we can set its health to like 30, so we'll die in three shots. We're also gonna take the react scale. Well No, we don't need to. Because it, it's not going to call the... Yeah, so it just popped. Um, doing it this way is going to be more precise. It's going to be like, I want to call this specific function on this specific class. Doing it this way, the send message way, is saying, I want to call damage if it exists. And what that means is everywhere on that object not just once. So because our ball now has because our ball now has two things on it that call damage it's going to not only interact with our shot by going up a little bit but also it's going to die after three shots. So we can skeet shoot. Well if I'm even a decent shot at all. There we go. So it still disappeared, it still took damage, well sort of, it's inactive if you remember correctly. So if I actually come back over here to the ball and I uncheck it again, it's still bouncing, it's still going. And I can shoot it, uh, shoot it again if I'm good enough, which I'm clearly not, oh bounce out of the world, oh no, oh that's terrible. Anyway, you get the deal. It has both, so send message calls both, but if it, um, if we only do the one, the, the this way, then it'll only call it on the one function. Hopefully that makes some kind of sense and that gives you some insight into how to pass things between things. So like integers, it works with anything by the way. You can use strings, you can use integers, you can use custom classes like we just did. Um, and yeah, it also works with game objects. Um, so you can pass any anything that is an object, which is pretty much anything, you can pass between objects. Uh, something worth noting though, um, get component doesn't work on custom classes like this one. If we try to do that, uh, here I'll damage info. Uh, I'm just doing this for the purposes of the error that we're going to get. We get this awesome error that says damage info must be converted to Unity Engine component in order to be used as a parameter T in da 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 da. What that means is that um, uh, well, if we look at the script on it, we're doing a get component, but damage info isn't a component. It's it's typeless. The well, <laughs> now I'm getting uh, it's an empty class. It's not it's not typeless. It's an empty class. This is a mono behavior. Damageable is a mono behavior which extends from component at some point in time. Uh, again, components are up here, right? These are the components. So we have. A mono behavior, which at some point in its life was a component, so it is a component. This thing was never anything other than what it is. It's kind of an easy way, well, I hope an easy way to think about extensions. Um, this was a, is a mono behavior, but is also damageable. Um, but this was never anything but damage info, if that makes sense. So because this was never anything but damage info, it was never a component, so it, it's not in any way a component. And that's what we're trying to tell it it is, is a component. And our our, our compiler freaks out and goes, what the hell, man, it's not, it's not that. Why are you telling me it is that? Stop giving me contradictory information. 
we go, oh, sorry, and we change it back. Now, the way that we would make that work is a couple ways. We can make it extend mono behavior, because that obviously works down here. The problem is if we make this extend mono behavior, we're going to get a different error for a different place. Because you can't have, oh, well, we should be getting a different error for a different place. Typically speaking, you can't do new mono behaviors. It usually doesn't like that. For some reason, it's okay with it, which is confusing. Oh, no, it'll probably yell at us when we hit start. No? Ah, there it is. There's there's our our warning. So it says it doesn't like the mono behaviors. Um, it doesn't like adding a new mono behavior is what it doesn't like. So we can't have this as a mono behavior. We can have it as a component. And I think it still yells at you, but I think it yells at you differently. <laughs> no, it doesn't yell at you for that. All right. I guess it's a way to do things. Um, personally, I just prefer to... Oh, well, we're not actually doing the new thing anymore. Whatever. The deal is um, you can't do new mono behaviors, and I don't think you can do new components either, but you can do new empty classes, and to do a new empty class is what you usually want to do. I hope that makes some kind of sense. So we couldn't say, I want a new damageable variable here. We have to do a new damage info variable yeah really looking for feedback on this one <laughs> if you guys found this really really confusing please let me know let me know on Twitter and in the comments or whatever I I will try to do my best to um, to maybe do all the work beforehand and try to think of a better way to explain things beforehand if uh, that's needed um, but if you understood it completely, please also leave a comment and hit me up on Twitter because I want to know if I'm doing a good job. Um, yeah. So we have a ball that explodes and a pillar that goes away. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Anyway. Um, yeah, so let me know what you thought. And uh, if you guys have any suggestions or anything, again, you know, comment. Hit me up on Twitter. Because I'm I'm running out of topics. I want to. I said I wanted to talk about visual stuff at some point in time, and I will. And eventually, I'm going to want to start doing a Maya tutorial series on the intros to modeling. But I have to really think that one through before I, I start. There's a lot in Maya. Maya is a much bigger program than Unity is. Um, but I love Maya. I really do. I'm an artist. I don't know if you guys know that. I'm an artist and designer, so um, I do know both pretty well. But Anyway, let me know what you thought of this video. Let me know if you have any uh, suggestions for future videos or any questions that I can maybe make a video out of. Those are awesome. I could do one on light baking. I could do one on like camera effects. I could do one on uh, uh, more scripting, uh, depending on what you guys want to do from that. Um, Maya's kind of off bounds, like I said, until I can have a, have a chance to consider what the hell I'm going to do with that. But um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video, and that's it for now. Bye bye